Billy's off bass fishing anyway, totally. Bass fishing. Oh my God, bass fishing. <laughs> We've never done two in one stream before, so maybe that's the move. Uh, let's see, Brian Sutton's break from Gentle on My Mind. Ooh, that's a good one. I find that one uh, appealing too, because we really haven't done that much Brian Sutton. In fact, I don't think we've done it. Okay, here we go. but I think that gentle on my mind one is is pretty appealing to me I think I want to try that one thank god it's uh it's only a half break um she's flooding it with someone else <laughs> all right so there's a pickup in there that's probably a little bit tough to hear just because we got a full band hanging out Brian's not super loud but let's see if we can grab it I'm gonna slow things down to half speed um Looks like. Can you really hear that stuff in your head and improvise on the spot? Yeah, I mean, what's what's happening here, like if someone was gonna improvise, before we look at Brian's break, let's talk about it. Because I did just play a break to the general on my mind a second ago. Or at least I attempted to. <laughs> so breaks are made out of really, uh, really defined chunks, right? So the melody to the song is basically one note. Right. right, it's got this really like r repetitious melody. But it's done that your door is always open and your path is free to walk. That makes me tend to leave my sleeping bag put up and stashed behind your couch. So because it's got a really repeated melody, um, it's pretty easy to work with. So if I was playing a simple break. Outlining the chord changes while well, no melody's happening. And then this melody. Right, it's just a bunch of repeated notes. does brian uses both of those maneuvers that i just used right there in this break he's just got a bunch of other you know flashy cool stuff around it that i'm not doing i hope that takes you know at least a little bit of the mystery away right we're working with a really uh repetitious melody and so when you put a kickoff phrase on it and you put like the, the right kind of ending on it and you put in double stops and other little tricks it's not impossible to imagine someone just creating a break on the fly I think the hardest thing about general on my mind is just that the form is a little crooked. I'm not sure that I've played it correctly once, but you know, it's got like a weird extra measure or something in the second half and it makes more sense if you're singing it. Anyway, I was just making sure I was hearing that correctly, sort of how it comes off one break into the next. So I can hear the pickup correctly <laughs> now that I understand everything goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. I kind of did you like that, that meme where it's like, you know, draw a circle. You know, draw a smaller circle, fill in the rest of the details of the rabbit. And it's like a beautiful picture of a rabbit. I kind of did that to you. <laughs> Let's put these drums in parentheses just so people know that they're less important, even though they're there. Brian Sutton's using some pull-offs just so things feel more legato-y. 
pretty, pretty. All right, it's very pentatonic ascending line, but it's not perfectly pentatonic. He gets the major seventh in there. Um, he puts it on a downbeat. I think he's working with the chord change, is what he's thinking. Got a quick slide up here. He's hitting fifth fret right there. I think that's right. I do understand the parallels you make between music and language in terms of construction and expression. I just suck at playing the music part. Yeah, application is actually something that people tend to struggle with a lot. Um, there's this real temptation where when you when you can't play it, you still want to understand it. So you go and you look up more and more understanding, more and more technical information, and uh, people tend to avoid the application. Now, I'm not calling you out, Ryan, or anything. I'm just saying that that's something that, that happens a lot, where people tend to overcompensate on the understanding uh, because they lack application. And really what that comes down to is just playing more music um, and taking everything that you learn and trying to apply it in a really active way. So, um, for instance, you might look at me transcribe something like this and you're like, man, Brian Sutton plays over this D chord in this area for a long time and he can really get a lot of language out of it. So you may, might think, well, you know, I got to do that. So you take that spot on the guitar and you think, you know, You start working through this idea. It's like, ah, Brian Sutton can make language here. Why can't I make language here? Right? And you do that practical application rather than just learning this tab and thinking, ah, Brian Sutton did this thing. I'm going to learn how to play the thing. Instead, you figure out the application trick. All right, quarter notes. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Cool move, Brian. I can tell you, I wouldn't have played that. It sounds like he's doing the little blues bar. You flatten out your first knuckle and you get like a little bar going to the next string. If anyone doesn't do that, you should start doing that. That's the maneuver that just happened right there in the music. This thing is so tough. I'm gonna take away the sheet music for a second so I can look at what I've written so far. Whoa, this is definitely a tough one so far. So I'm hearing this move a handful of times in, in a row, three times in a row, it sounds like. In fact, this is a tough one, dude. <laughs> yeah, it is a tough one. I know you're probably looking at like the the rhythmic notation. And you're like, man, what has Marcel gotten himself into? That's how I feel too, dude. <laughs> it was a suggestion though, you know? People throw things out there. I'm going to pick a toughie. I mean, it could have been David Greer, and we would all be sitting here listening to a recording at like 25% speed. Billy's off bass fishing anyway, totally. Bass fishing. Oh my god. Bass fishing. Whoops. Is that what I heard? How can it seem like they never make one mistake? <laughs> there are little things that, that they would probably change if they could go back and 
It, not that Brian Sutton feels that way his breaks. I mean, I don't feel that way about my breaks. Is after I play, you know, it's out there in the world and I accept it. There are little things that aren't perfect. Um, and I pointed one out right here where when he goes to play this pull-off, he kind of misses the string a little bit or he just kind of clips it or his hands aren't perfectly in sync and this is kind of dead. I know what he's trying to play, but it's not perfect. And that might seem a little nitpicky, but I mean, Brian Sutton probably nitpicks his own playing like that and that's why he's so good. He looks at that moment and he's like, next time let's do that better. <laughs> And that's how these guys get so good. Yeah, if you want to develop really good habits about playing everything cleanly too, one piece of advice that I heard that I always really enjoyed was to record yourself playing and listen to it back. <laughs> because a lot of times you kind of accept things. You're like, oh, well, I get to the hard part, so I slow down a little bit. Or I missed the snow, but it's not a big deal. But when you have to listen to it back, suddenly it's a much bigger deal. Suddenly it makes you think about those things more carefully and you give yourself less excuses. Fourth row right here. Seems like I'm trying to catch up to you sometimes. Oh man, I just play all day, every day. Teaching lessons is a real good way to uh, to stay on top of your game because I never know what people are going to ask. So I get to explain a lot of different things and that's always really fun. Guys, I, I think we may have done it. I think this may be Brian Sutton's whole break for this one. Oh, and it's a fun one. It's a tough one. Didn't think I'd do this today. Uh, uh man. Didn't I already play this part? <laughs> uh, I messed up the timing of that. We got a scroll from right here. Is a toughie for sure. That's performed by Brian Sudden. We'll write uh, Tim O'Brien Band 2 here. Good stuff, good stuff. I can't believe we did two today, guys. I better save this before the computer crashes and I lose it forever. I'm not about to go sit down and write <laughs> this whole thing down again. Two songs, one live stream though. That's awesome, guys. We went above and beyond today. These live streams happen every Tuesday. We're trying to do them around 12.30 Eastern time. Normally I get on here for about an hour and we transcribe something. I think today we've been on for a little bit longer. And we'll see you all next time for another live stream. So you all have a great day.